All right, it's bubble sort time. I have no idea if you've seen my prior video on merge sort or not, but this is going to be another attempt at doing this without having tried before. It's either going to be very easy or not. I think it'll be easier than merge sort, though. We'll find out. Um, let's go back to our graphic of these sorting algorithms and check out what bubble sort looks like. Go! So as you can see, it compares two at a time, starting from the beginning. And it looks like it moves the greater one up the array. And basically, if you watch the CS50 video, this continues uh, until the array is sorted. It's just that the only catch is... Oh, i got to pause it. Pause fast. The only catch is once it does it once, it reduces the number of things it looks at. So I think this will probably be pretty easy. We can write one for loop, but the only catch is that for loop has to look at a limited or a decreasing number of items every pass through. Um, that's exciting. Uh, okay. Doesn't look like too much. And we probably also have to keep a flag for if it passes through and no changes are made. So if no changes are made, that means the array is sorted. You don't want to, you know, if you happen to have them all sorted on pass 4, you don't want to have to go through passes 5 through 15 if it's all sorted already. That seems like it's slow. So, all right, let's try it, I guess. I think this is almost done. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, here we go. Let's start with a... Uh, input array don't forget to import your arrays class uh, we'll make it make it an even number for now um, I think this should work anyway it could actually work for any number Let's just do it. Cool. All right, there's sort me, and we'll have our uh, bubble sort method. And that needs to go down here, public static void, no return, we'll just log it here. Uh, bubble sort, it needs to take an array. Cool. All right, so far so good. All right, so we're gonna need to store like the top index, right? Because it starts at 16, but then it decreases. Um, we need to store that as a variable in this in this array. So we'll say int top index equals, the first one is going to be the length of the array, right? Top index. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, input array dot length. Cool. All right. Do a little loop for i is 0 i is less than t mm. yeah yeah less than the length of the of the top index sure no actually it should be le mm. let's try the, le the length of the top index first uh, and then we'll add one to i every time of course top index dot length is not a thing all right, so we check to see if input array at i is less than input array at i plus 1. What do we do? So that means the first one is less than the second one. We don't do anything. Else if input array at i is greater than input array i plus 1. So that's if the first one is bigger than the second one, we should switch them. So we should say uh, variable, we'll say the temp, you know, temp value or something like that. Uh, oops, not var, sorry. Temp val is equal to, uh, we store what's in i, right? Yeah, the i comes out. And then we say input array at i is equal to input array i plus 1. And then you say input array at i plus 1 is equal to our temp val. So we have to do that because if we just do, if we don't do this, oops, 
if we don't do this, then input array at i takes the value of the one after it. So like if we, so like we would just switch these two, or, or four would become five, but five would be the same. It wouldn't switch. So we have to include the temporary value so that they can actually switch. Um, oh, we forgot our flag. We need a flag. Boolean flag. Um, every time this runs, yeah. So flag needs to start at. Um, we'll say we'll say comparison made, and it starts false. And if we make one, actually, we should say switch made, not comparison made. Switch made false. And if we make one, uh, it should say switch made is true. And then we want to check that once the loop is run. So after the loop, we want to say if switch made is true, then we're done, and we want to log that array. Can't console log. Uh, I can't do anything without my computer freezing. Is it still working? I think it is still working. Hold on, I'm gonna pause it so this doesn't break. One sec. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was literally 40 seconds. If you're still watching, you deserve a medal. That's weird. Is it working? I don't understand. Oh, it is. Okay, good. Uh, all right. That's if it's false. If it remains false. Otherwise, if it's true, we probably want to do this again. We probably want to change... Hmm... So we're going to have a problem because we don't have any way of storing. See, so maybe this top index needs to be a global variable up here. Let's make it up here, in top index. We'll just keep it there. We'll set its value here. No, it's not going to work. We should probably set its value up here. Top index equals sort me dot length. Why is it not working? Yeah. It's gotta be private. And then down here, when we call the function again, we wanna reduce top index's value by one because that needs to decrease by one every time it bubbles through and then call bubble sort again with input array okay let's find out if it works I don't know let's maybe not find out if it works <laughs> what are you doing? I set the. Why is it not working? Okay. Hold on a sec. So I like. There, there we go. Run. It wouldn't let me run it. Okay, whatever. All right, let's see what it looks like. Will we get it on the first try? <laughs> no, we will not. It looks like on line 12, oh no, on line 34, 
we have gone out of bounds. So because if top index is the length, then it's actually got to be, we're checking i plus 1 here. So this should actually say below that. Right, it should stay one below the top index. All right, let's try again. Why would it? Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. Whoa, hey, cool. It looks like it worked. All right, we did it on like, the first and a half try. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think it worked. Um, what if we change one of these? Like, we, we, it did work with duplicates. That's good. The reason why it works with duplicates is because it only switches if the first is bigger than the second. So, like, if they're equal, it does nothing, which is fine. Um, all right, what if we give it a sorted one? Just right off the bat. Yeah. So we also want to check if it gets a sorted one, we want to make sure it doesn't go through it more than once. So we could print out, uh, not in the loop, in the function, we could print out just like a thing. Say it's running. If it only, if it only goes once, yeah, good. All right, so that's pretty good. All right. I thought that was going to take a little longer, um, but but yeah, so that's that's bubble sort for you. Now keep in mind, for your project, you're going to have to write a program that allows the user to pick what kind of sort they want, similar to the application that we've been using to visualize it. Uh, it's going to need to do this counter. So you guys now have seen bubble and merge sort implemented on screen. Your task is going to be to do two more on your own and then put them together in a program. Hope you're up for the challenge. Anyway, um, that was fun. And see you next time. Bye.